how to talk about the spaghetti, Jeff. You had to do that one. Good morning, everybody. How are we doing today? Good? Energy, good, good, I like that. All right, I'm going to be talking about six apps, one code with Ionic. Yep, um, yep, so without further ado, let's begin. I'll get the boring stuff out of the way, my little dating profile picture, you know? Um, so I'm Sani Youssef, I'm the founder of Hybrid. Uh, I'm a Google developer expert for web technologies as well, uh, and I have a little project I'm working on called UI School where I'm the lead instructor, and uh, more about that a little bit later. Uh, and I'm a huge fan of the Avatar movie, like the blue people, not that other nonsense thing they did, that one. If you have not seen that movie, we cannot be friends. I will repeat, we can't be friends. If you need to find me, just Google Sani Yusuf or at Sani Yusuf. If you find anyone looking as gorgeous as this with that username, just let me know so I can sue them. <laughs> Thank you. All right, let's start. Um, so the web is everywhere today, like everywhere, like everywhere. You go mobile, you see the web. The web is powering mobile today, your mobile apps, your mobile web apps, a lot of all these things. Um, traditional web applications is so crazy. In 2018, we have to use the word traditional web applications to, to convey meaning. That's how far we've come. Uh, but in case you don't know what I mean, basically, if you have to sit down on a chair somewhere and have a big screen in front of you or multiple, yes, that's a traditional web application. Uh, a standard desktop application, so if you have to download some EXE or I don't know what the Linux people do, I think you have to like, create your own debugger to have that, things like that. But yeah, those ones. Uh, IoT, Internet of Things, I think one word for this is just look for a guy called Yuri Sheket, and that's all. You would see how IoT is powered by the web. But yeah, 5G coming along, all these things. So uh, uh, JavaScript is really, really powering the, uh, the IoT. And when I say the web, I guess uh, what I mean is web technologies, anything that you can build with JavaScript, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, basically like a browser or non-browser environment with web technologies, and that is what I constitute by the web. Uh, server side. Uh, we also how Node.js pretty much changed the landscape of development. Node.js came along and people just stopped writing real scripts and started writing Node scripts, uh, which is good. Uh, TV applications. Uh, I think everyone in this room at this point is probably not using an analog TV and probably not even a digital one. Everyone has got a smart TV now. Uh, or a lot of people have smart TVs and a lot of those applications are actually powered by web technologies. And then you talk about proprietary devices. What do I mean by that? Console games, Xbox, PlayStation, or if you like me and you like to fly and you fly the really, really poor people's class, you know, and they give you this screen apparently just to make yourself feel good. Uh, um, yeah, some people get beds, but you get a screen. Uh, and yeah, if you actually play around, a lot of those are actually web, web applications. I know because I've broken one of them while flying before. Uh, yeah, so let's play a quick game. Who wants to play a game? Who wants to play a game? I'm giving free Teslas, by the way. <laughs> uh, I got their attention now. So I want you to go on this website, sli.do. Very short, sli.do, and it should ask you for an event code. No signing, nothing. And you should just put ngc for ngconf. sli.do. Anybody there yet? You should see one question with a bunch of answers, right? So. Can you spot the web application is the name of our game? Can you spot the web application? Uh, the first one is on tap there. Anybody know on tap? Yeah, we've seen all the alcoholics in the room. Uh, Uber. Exactly, we all know Uber. Swork it, anybody swork it out? Anybody? Okay. Slack. Anybody know Slack? <laughs> Visual Studio Code. Anybody know this one? So, these are your options, quickly. Go vote. You can vote multiple choices, one choice, it's totally up to you. Spot the web application. And while that's happening, actually what I'm going to go and do is actually see the results. And I'm just gonna refresh and see how we are voting. Wow, interesting. Okay, so while everybody's voting, we have like 48 people voting. We have some people on tap, none of them, VS Code, Slack, Uber. The main point of this is not to show you who's right or wrong. It's just more about the distribution of opinion here how some people think this is the web app, that's the web app. Some people even think all of them is the web app. Actually, a lot of them. So what's the right answer? What is the correct answer? The correct answer is all of them are actually built with web technologies. So if you 
uh, voted uh, for that. You have just won a prize. I said I'm giving out Teslas. Pictures of Teslas, I meant. So <laughs> congratulations. You won yourself a picture of a Tesla. So, but some people might be still skeptical at this point. They might not believe me. Okay. So it's all about devices. Today, our apps run on different devices, different devices. We all have like multiple devices, right? Either you have a phone and a laptop or things like that. And if you notice, the, if you have a, the same app across devices, the app actually doesn't really, the functionality doesn't change. All that changes is the experience. So screen size and accessibility and inputs, those are the things that determine that experience. Like I could use my space bar to control the slides, but I'm using this. So it's like the experience, I, when I know that if I click this clicker, I want the slides to still you know, go to the next slide. So it's all about the experience that changes. And it's basically like this. So this is Spotify. Everybody knows Spotify, right? And this is Spotify running on multiple different environments. But the main experience of Spotify is you want to listen to music. And in each and every one of these, you can listen to music. You, you might wake up and turn on your um, Alexa home, play Spotify, you know, on your way to the, to the train station, you, you're using your, your phone. Uh, when you go jogging, you have your smartwatch. On your car, you play Spotify. You go to work and you pretend you're working, but you're not, and then you toggle Spotify. And you get home after a long day, what do you do? You turn on your TV, Spotify. And at every single point in time, your playlist, your experience, everything just moves. The functionality doesn't really change. It's just the experience that changes. So what's the issue here? Because that, what I just showed is basically what we want. If you have an ideal application, like you have a billion dollar application, you want your app to work on all these platforms. But what's the issue with that? This is the problem, this guy. Now if for some reason you have to support iOS, you first of all have to find a developer which will not, the person is not actually not, not gonna work full time for you because they know they can get a job anywhere. That's number one, and they want 60% of your company, leaving you to be a minority shareholder. And then you have to pay them pretty much everything you raised in Series A. Um, and then the Android guys will come along, and you have to find somebody that actually knows Android, not just Java, like Android SDK. And the web is pretty easy. You could pretty much find someone off the street to make your web application. We all know that one guy that will make a website for $5. Uh, do it for a fiver. Then, you have a lot of rich users buying Macs. Now you have to support Mac. If you can get, in, get through all the crazy things Apple will put you through and survive that, good luck. And then these people, because they kind of like run 90% of the computers in the world, so you have to support them, which is the Windows people. And that's the problem. It's like you can already see how different they are. The cost, the tools they use, and they all hate each other, <laughs> literally. Absolutely hate each other because they all think they're the best. That's the thing. So if a boss hits a guy from one team, that's the end. You can't just take another guy from the, um, the, the, another team to just to replace him. But you know the craziest part? They're all building the same product. How crazy is that? And then this guy gets hired. Everybody know the new manager? The guy that comes in and wants to see spreadsheets for the past five years? That guy gets hired. And a bunch of your mates snitch on you because they're like, I just want to be on the good side of the new manager. And what's the first thing every new manager says? There's no budget. We need water, no budget. We need air, no budget. There's no tissue in the bathroom, no budget. Developers never have budget, but they have budget for those crazy expensive lunches, you know? The ones nobody eats and then the office has to eat, those ones. And he says, well, we ain't got money, you have to find a way to reuse across all these platforms now. So a bunch of your mates are gonna get let go and you have to figure this out. This is you at that point. Poor you, poor you. Don't know what you're doing. Okay. So you start to think, because when we push the wall, what do we do? We think. We innovate. Is there a better, more efficient way for cross-platform development? And from Sado, you, you start to think, and ideas come. <gasps> the first thing is, every modern device today is capable of running web technologies. Bingo. Web technologies are relatively easier just to learn and to use. Like, I could teach you how to create a HTML web page in like a day, but I'll, you'll probably still be in public static main in Java for like an, a month, still not know what you're doing. Uh, web developers are everywhere. You could just get that guy that you'd give five pounds and he'll probably do it for you. They're easy to find, you know, uh, and good developers are everywhere too, web developers. 
so you start to think, why can't we just web everything? Like, doesn't that just make sense, you know? We can use the web everywhere, you know? So let's create this fictional billion dollar use case. We have this application we want to create. We want to support iOS, Android, and for our grandma and grandfather that don't want to buy a new phone that use Windows phones. And then desktop applications, we want to make sure it's responsive in mobile web. And then there's this new thing called PWA. We want to do that as well. And then we have to do the Windows people, the rich people that use OS X, and those guys that wear glasses for Linux. Uh, that one. Great idea, right? This is what we want to do, right? OK, billion dollar application. So let's solve the mobile problem first. Things we want to achieve. We want to make sure we're coding once with web technologies, right? There's no point of using the web if you're not doing it once. Uh, we want to be able to access hardware features like Bluetooth, GPS, and all of that, because the biggest problem with the web is access to device. Like five years ago, if you wanted to take a simple picture on a web application, it was absolutely nuts. You had to use this very great smart thing called Flash. It was very interesting. You know, you had to make sure the user had the right version, and it was a very dark time. Uh, and yeah, so this is where Cordova comes in. Cordova is basically, it originally used to be called PhoneGap, and there's a backstory about how Cordova and PhoneGap still exist. You can totally stack overflow that one. Uh, it's part of the Apache Open Source Foundation. Uh, it bridges the gap between the web code and the device features. So now your web code can actually access those device features, Bluetooth, GPS, accelerometer, uh, and all the things that Facebook uses to like, you know, spy on you. Uh, it supports all major operating systems. So Android, iOS, Windows, Ubuntu OS, Blackberry, if you still use one. Uh, it has a plugin interface for extending these uh, features. So we've solved the mobile problem, right? Well, not really. Why? This is the problem. The mobile ecosystem, they all have different UI SDKs. Wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> you will never see that in any other talk. That deserves a round of applause of its own. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wonderful. Java wanted to update. <laughs> all right. So this is the problem. Apart from the fact that they have different UI SDKs and libraries, they also have different user experiences. The people that are using, uh, the Android users in the room already know which one is their app. The iOS users know which one is theirs. The Windows people know which one is theirs. That's it. You automatically just know because you're used to that experience. Some devices have back buttons. Android, we have back buttons. Uh, iOS has one button. Well, actually now they have none because every year they remove something. Last year they removed the headphone jack. This year they removed the button. Next year they probably removed the screen. You know? <laughs> We give you the Alexa iPhone, and you see all these Apple people. But you don't really need the screen. Like, come on, how many times do you look at your screen, man? Like, <laughs> they, would, they would find a way to rationalize it. <laughs> these guys would queue up for three days in the rain for a phone without a screen. I promise you that. <laughs> uh, I mean, don't forget the tablets and the phablets. You know those confused phones? The ones that, hello? Those, you need like five things, like you, Throw it and kill somebody with it, yeah. Don't forget those devices. Uh, so how do you reuse at this level? Drum roll. Actually, not yet drum roll. So this, let's visualize the problem. This is a native app. The native SDKs give you like, you know, um, they give you gestures, the web view, buttons, tabs, animations. When, I, when you're using a native, this is the best engineers of iOS and Android came together and said, how can we give people a great user experience? And they came up with those features. So, and come on, we're not better than those engineers. They're really, really smart people. And they came up with that stack. So when, using native is like, hey, I want you to create me furniture, but I buy you IKEA. So just you know, follow some instructions and just you know, sort of like do the IKEA thing. And in five minutes, you're good to go. So it's like plug and play. And you also have direct access to those guys, all those things that Apple and Cambridge Analytica used to spy on you. Um, while on your hybrid application with Cordova, you have Cordova giving you access to that, you have the web view, and you write HTML code. And a lot of people end up with what I call a Franken app, a Frankenstein app, because they just take this 79,000 megabyte page and just put it on Cordova. Oh no, Cordova is slow. No, you're an idiot, that's why. <laughs> uh, and that's what they do. So, and so writing HTML code is like, I want you to make me that furniture, but I say, here's some wood. 
You know what? I don't even give you wood. I say, here's a forest. Go fetch your own tree. Here's a sword. You know what? You don't even need the sword. Create your own sword. Because that's what we have on the web. Divs, spans, primitives, tables if you still use them. You know? Things like that. And Cordoba gives you access. So the problem is a lot of people start making their own interpretations of that, and we end up with 6,000 interpretations. When 10,000 people are saying the same thing, nobody's talking. So how do we achieve a uniform mobile experience at this level? Drum roll. Da -da 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 -da. This guy. Ionic comes into play. Exactly. So introducing Ionic. What is Ionic? It is a web SDK for creating mobile applications. You will go on Stack Overflow and 6,000 people might tell you 6,000 different things. It does not get any easier than this. Uh, it's open source. It's completely open source, which means it's free. You're not paying for it. It's free. It's built with HTML uh, technologies, web technology, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and TypeScript, you know, because we want to be, you know, want to be right good JavaScript. It supports Android, iOS, and Windows Universal as first classes. And I'm not, the key word there is Windows Universal, because Microsoft makes us believe that, you know, Windows Phone is no more. It's just one experience everywhere. So they do that. So what does the stack look like when you're creating your app? You have your code, which you write with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And then you use the Ionic, um, what's it called, um, uh, SDK. And that currently is built on Angular, and that's changing pretty soon. But the current version of Ionic is built on Angular, so you can reach out and use any of the Angular features. And of course, everything is inside of your web view, which runs in your native container, which is why I always say Ionic apps are native applications. No, I'm not trying to deceive you. They are. The web view is a native component. We did not create the web view. Uh, and Cordova is that cool guy. That, Cordova is like the best guy. He's like, Cordova is the one technology that's taking blame for everybody else's mistakes. Because like, Cordova is bad. No, you're an idiot. You're using it wrong and everything. You tell Cordova, get me a camera. Sorry, get me a picture. Cordova will be like, yes, I'll do that for you. He doesn't even ask you what device you're on your. He just says, I got you. It's a really, really nice device, uh, nice technology. So features Vionic. This is great. So this is a, uh, an application built in Ionic, the same exact code running across multiple platforms. So it automatically also adjusts and suit the needs of that particular platform without you need, needing to do that. There's a powerful Ionic cons library built by Ben. And it's great, great, great library, free icons, more than 1,000 of them. Um, customizable and configurable, because when you're using tools like this, you want to know how you can easily configure your applications and stuff. Um, First class CLI tool. Gone are the days when we would make a change on our web application and we would just press F5 and that was it. Today you need this thing called Webpack. You need another thing called um, Note. Some people still use Bower and all these crazy things. And to be honest, I don't want to do that. So the CLI handles all of that for you. SAS preprocessing, TypeScript transp transpiling, error reporting, and uh, supports AOT. Uses the Angular AOT and Tree Shaker. Uh, other features, right to left support, because we kind of forget like a billion people read from right to left. Uh, internationalization, supporting uh, multiple languages. And there's the Ionic Pro Cloud tools. Who's using Ionic? Because everybody wants to know who's using it. More than 4 million apps have been generated, 110 plus countries that have communities. Uh, there's actually a meetup tonight, so make sure you come through right here in Utah. Uh, 18,000 Slack members. Actually, I checked that number this morning, and I think it's around 19K. So you can pretty much go, if you don't know what you're doing at work, you can find somebody that'll probably do it for you for free on the Slack. Uh, Active Forum and Stack Overflow, pretty nice. 34,000 stars on GitHub. And companies like Microsoft, Airbus, Diesel, Dow Jones, ETC, all use Ion, and these are some of the apps they've built. Uh, so let's get started. Enough talk, right? Shall we see some code? Who wants to see some code? There we go, okay. To get started, simply just do npm install, you know, ionic start. My app is the name of your app, and then you have a bunch of templates. They give you templates like blank, um, tabs, Google Maps template, or you can just put a GitHub URL or somebody that created their template and just like steal it off them. Uh, you cd, and you use the command ionic serve, and that's it. Who wants to see? I am the Night King. Okay, Ooh, maybe I shouldn't have shown that one. Mm. Okay. Uh, all right, so I actually already have an app I've literally just created uh, because I don't want to npm install live. That is probably a terrible idea. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to toggle the 
the terminal here. Uh, and I'm just gonna say Ionic Lab, actually. I'm not gonna run Ionic Serve. Ionic Lab actually runs Ionic Serve behind the scenes, but it uses a mobile view. You're gonna see this really, really cool view. And by the way, how's the font size? All good? Go, okay. No, Sunny, that means something totally different somewhere else. Uh, let's do this. And, okay, so everybody can see that? Pretty good? So we can see our, let me just reduce this so that we can see them on full screen. Who can guess which one is Android? See, which one is iOS? Exactly. So if you notice, I haven't labeled them, but the Android people know which one is theirs. And who can guess which one is this guy? Good, for my grandma and granddad. Uh, I haven't written any code yet, but we can already see that there are glaring differences. The placement of the header, the font size, the shadows, this is what the Ionic SDK already does automatically for you. It knows the mobile platform better than you do uh, so that you don't have to do this. So let's go ahead and see what we should do. So I have this um, very, very nice um, server that I have run in. Um, which is a bunch of movies that I really, really like, and it has this. So let's go ahead and actually try to use this application. So I'm gonna go into the store, and this is just a standard app, um, uh, Angular application here. So the first thing I'm gonna do, because I'm gonna be making a GET request, uh, I'm gonna go, what do you need to do when you wanna make a GET request? Let's see, let's test your Angular skills. What's the first thing you do? HTTP client module, good, okay, good. And I'm glad the person that said that is someone I actually trained. Hmm, nice. Uh, so we are gonna, oh, Sunny, it, I think it's import from uh, at Angular forward slash common forward slash HTTP, correct? And then we have the HTTP client module, we have that guy, and then we make sure that that guy works by putting him in the imports block, so we're making him available across our application. Standard app, Angular application. Now we want to go to our home page. This is what we see in our home page right now. What should we name our application? Any takers? Salt spaghetti. Oh, Jeff wouldn't let that go. Oh, I can't spell spaghetti. Uh, something like that, right? Yeah. That one, right? Spaghetti. Okay, good. It's not my fault. African education people, it's not my fault. Uh, then I do what I always do when I'm working with Ionic, which is I go to the documentations and steal Brandy's great examples because they're better than mine. So I'll go to the framework and I'll go to explore docs. Uh, come on, I have a demo here, internet. I command you to navigate, good. And UI components. And I go to the UI components and I go to cards because everybody likes cards. So I'm gonna just go to cards. Let's see what card I should use. And I like the way this looks, actually. So I'm gonna just copy this card here, um, this, bit of, uh, this bit of code, because I'm very, very lazy. And I will just put that here. And so this is the example here. I wanna put the name of my favorite movie and the picture. And with the, I don't need to do that guy. So let's go ahead and see that. So uh, now I wanna go uh, to the home .ts because I want to make a get request. So I would import from, no, sunny spell, from uh, at angular forward slash common forward slash HTTP. And here, what do I get, anybody? Exactly, the HTTP client itself. Okay, so I'm just gonna say private HTTP and I'm gonna say HTTP client for dependency injection, I'm making it part of my class, and I'm just gonna create a public property called my films, right? And I'm just gonna make a get request. So let's look at that API. First of all, let's have a look. So you, you can see each movie has these properties. Title, I'm gonna focus on just title and poster for the image. And this is the, um, the API uh, link. So I'm just gonna say this, that, HTTP, dot what, anybody? Get, and what do I pass? URL, this guy. And I'm just gonna say this, uh-oh, no, this, that, my films equals that to make sure that the observable nine gets returned this way, right? And what's the next thing I would do? I will just go here and just do an ng 
like that, ng4 equals, um, there we go, this guy, ng4 equals let film of my films. And because this is an observable, what do I do? Async pipe, good, we're listening in class. Uh huh. And first thing I want to do is I want to bind this guy to the image, and I want to say, hey, our film has a property called what? Poster. And here, on the title, I want to have film dot, I think it's title, right? And I'm going to save that. I think it's title. Title, yes. Yeah. And now let's go ahead and see salt spaghetti. So salt spaghetti is not rendering something. Let's see. I think I know what I've done. I've broken, uh, yes. Okay, my DevTools is completely hanging now. I think I've broken Webpack, completely broken Webpack. And let me just make sure I don't have any service worker. Come on, Chrome, I'm on a time here. I'm on a clock. Take your time, Chrome, take your time. Okay, so we don't have any service workers. And uh, yes, I have broken my build, and I'm just gonna do this. So to do this, I'm gonna restart the build. I'm just gonna run Ionic Lab again. Uh, okay, and let's wait for it. Take your time. There we go, and voila! This is our application. Look at that. Look at these great movies. Fantastic beast. You know, all these cool movies, and this is the best one of them all. More, give me more, give me more. If you know, you know. <laughs> exactly. So, now we have this application, right? So, let's go back to the slides, actually. Uh, let's quickly go back to the slides. So. We solve mobile because we have iOS, iOS, Android, and Windows, and we can, uh, uh, of course, I could just do Ionic Cordova platform add and add any of those to like, you know, iOS and run it on an iOS simulator, send it to the App Store. So we've already solved that problem. But if you notice, we didn't, we're still writing how many pieces of code? One, okay, good. So we've solved those guys. Next, let's solve web now. So for web, it's all about adapting to screen size because different people have different computers. There's some people that just don't want to buy a new computer. And then there are these interesting guys that have like these crazy monitors. We always have that one guy at work. So it's all about adapting to screen sizes. Consider different input, uh, input keyboards. Some people use keyboards, some people use mice, some people would use touch because it's web. Uh, you have these computers that support all of them. And do not forget about accessibility. Do not forget about Seriously, when I found out the, the difference between strong and bold, it blew up my mind. Apparently, one of them is accessible while the other is not. It's like, it's, so do not forget about accessibility. Very, very important. Uh, let's see that. Do, 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 do. Oh, let's take the nasty thing. So, actually, this is already a web application running because if I actually just remove the Ionic Lab extension, we have a web app. But everybody hates this guy. This guy. Don't you hate this guy when you go on the web and you see this guy? Nobody likes this guy. This guy. This guy needs to go on a diet. Nobody likes this guy. So this is a web application. So the one thing we're gonna do actually for this is, Ionic has a great grid system. Uh, what we're gonna do actually to save ourselves some time is, I actually do have another application somewhere here that has that grid. So I'm just gonna open that and copy some of that code to save us some time. Um, Oh, great, Sunny! you actually deleted it. Uh, okay, there we go. And I'm just gonna open this guy here. And I'm just gonna copy this bit of code here. And I'm gonna go back to our own application here. So we are just gonna, I'm gonna put them side by side so you can actually see. Um, did I, oh, you need to do Control C, Sunny, if you wanna copy. I think that's how it works, right? Um, this is us. Why are you not copying? Uh, copy, paste, voila. Okay, works. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Energy, people, energy. So I'm just gonna take this guy here and do this guy here. And so, what do you see? Well, well, let me just actually delete this guy. Oh, just comment him out for now. And what do you see is I just have a grid, ion grid, uh, very similar to like bootstrap style, an ion row, an ion column. So what I'm doing here, I'm saying, by default, take 12 spaces, because it's a 12 space grid, uh, base grid. On a small device, use the entire 12 spaces. 
because on a small device, I want to make sure I have only one column. On a medium device, you use six spaces per column, so you're gonna have two spaces, right? On a large device, you use four spaces per column, so you're gonna have three, because four times three is 12. On an extra large device, you use three spaces, so you're gonna have four columns, because it's three, 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 three. And if you can't find anything, just default back to 12. Uh, so let's go ahead and see what this looks like. Woo! So suddenly this guy is much usable now. You can see. And for some reason, if we just start to shrink him down, he knows. He goes to three. Four, three, four. Sorry, I didn't have toys growing up. <laughs> yeah, I get carried away easily. And then we go smaller. Two. This is more like a tablet or those confused devices, you know? You see two columns. And then if you go back to a normal phone, which everybody has, like 90% of the world uses, you have one column, which is great. All good, right? Everybody agreed that we could, we're good to go now? You would, you would pay money to use this service, wouldn't you? Exactly, sorry. And uh, now we go back to the slides. John Snow. Uh, but what about PWA, right? What are actually PWAs? PWA stands for Progressive, sorry, Web Application. It basically means an, um, a web application that can run offline and has access to unlimited storage thanks to the service worker. It can be installed on a normal mobile phone. It has a splash screen, icons, like every other mobile phone. It runs in full screen thanks to the manifest JSON and service worker. Let's talk about the state of offline in 2018. We have sent people to the moon. I know, because I watched the video. Um, we have invented this thing called artificial intelligence that would eventually kill us all. Um, We've eradicated this disease called smallpox. Not one person living with this disease anymore. This is the best experience you can get when you're offline. <laughs> yes, this is the best thing you can see offline. A game. Some of you probably didn't even know this was a game. This is a game. This is the best thing you can see when you're offline in 2018. <clears throat> Wonderful. We have a guy that wants to send like, people to space and create like Hyperloop, and this is where we get offline. Interesting. So how does the service worker work? It's a proxy that sits between your app and the server, and it proxies requests and responses. So it allows you to cache unlimited data and supports push notification. And does anybody know what Li-Fi means? Li-Fi is when your phone has two bars and it makes you believe that you have service. No, you don't have service. Your phone is confused. <laughs> so it's Li-Fi. It's lying to you, you know? <laughs> exactly. It's totally confused. Let's see the demo, shall we? So luckily, this is gonna be the easiest demo because Ionic by default actually supports service workers. So we're just gonna go to the index.html here. And I'm just gonna uncomment a bunch of lines here. Uh, and that's it. And I'm gonna save this guy. And I'm saving this guy. And I'll refresh, nothing really changes. Nothing really changes, and I'll just refresh. So I'm gonna do something crazy. I'm gonna disconnect from my Wi-Fi. I told you I was crazy. I did tell you. This could go horribly wrong. If it goes horribly wrong, we just pretend that nothing happened and just, you know, yeah. Maybe I should refresh one more time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Turn off Wi-Fi. So we try to go to google.com or something, and we can play. <laughs> yeah, we can play this guy. Hey, this is not what I'm supposed to be using my time for. And then we go back. Let's refresh this guy. Voila. Did you see that? Refresh again. We're still online. This is really cool. We don't have internet, but our app is still running. Because why? When we activated the service worker, the service worker automatically goes and caches all the requests. Every one of those is a request. The API call, the images, and it's cached them. So now when we are requesting the same resource, as long as the app is concerned, we actually went to the server, but we're actually getting it quicker because no trip to the server. So this is really cool. Maybe this is a good time to actually go back to the internet. Exactly. But yeah, but this is really cool. Um, so we saw this problem now. So now let's sell desktop. By the way, I can't say desktop. Uh, I'm Nigerian, sorry. I always say desktop. It's too late for me to learn. Uh, so let's solve the desktop problem. It has a lot of common with web applications in terms of user experience, right? Because for you to use a desktop application, you need to sit in front of a computer. Uh, noticeable differences with web apps. Uh, 
Offline is a must. Imagine if you, Photoshop does not work when you don't have internet. Just go home. It has to work. Uh, OSS, Windows, and Linux all have different UI skins. You know, in the Mac, um, the close button is on, I think, the right hand side, left hand side. On Windows, it's on the right hand side. Things like that. On Ubuntu, it depends on which flavor you're using. You could probably hack it to make it in the middle. They allow you to do everything. Exactly. How do you ensure reusability? Here. Something called Electron exists. It's great. What is Electron? Electron is basically the Cordova for desktop. That's, that, that's, that's what I call it. It's open source, supports cross-platform de desktop development. Use web technologies to code applications. OS X, Linux, and Windows support first-class citizens. Some electrons app, uh, Electron apps you already use today that you don't even know, Slack and Visual Studio Code. That's crazy. You have an app built with HTML, which you use to write what? HTML. <laughs> that is crazy. That's inception. That's deep. Yeah. Very interesting. So let's see this demo in action. <laughs> All right. Let's go. Um, so to work with, um, what's it called, Ele Electron, you just need to download the Electron starter. Uh, you go to the Electron GitHub page, they have this starter, and you just download it, and you run npm install, and it takes like one second. I've actually gone ahead and already done that for you guys, because I care about all of you, you know. Uh, so I actually have this Electron quick starter application, and I'm just going to open it here. So let's open it here. And in Electron, you have this thing called the main.js. The main.js is like your index. And it allows you to specify a web page that you want to use as the entry point of your application. That's a HTML file that will be the first point of call. And in this case, an index of HTML traditionally, right? So I'm just going to go to our app because um, we're going to go to ng. So I'm just going to do back, and I'm going to say ng-conf application. And in the ng-conf application, we're going to go to the www folder and the index the HTML because let's have a look at that actually, sorry. Um, let's have a look at that quickly. Because over here, if you look, the WW folder is where the build happens. If you're not used to Ionic, that's like your build folder in Angular applications where you have all the bundled. And in there, that's where you have the index.html that you want to target. So all I need to actually do now is just go back to the Electron application and just run npm start. Da -da 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 and voila, this is a real Mac application running. Yeah. This is a real, so this is not a web app. This is a real Mac. You can see it has like, like I can minimize this. I can make it full screen. Like it's a real Mac. So you know what, let's, what would be cool? Let's actually, yeah, let's toggle full screen on here. <laughs> full screen web, full screen here, you know? <laughs> Pretty cool. Which is which? You know, that kind of like the Spider-Man meme. You, me? So yeah. I play too much. I and mean, we still have the same benefits, you know? You know, so this could be like, um, imagine Spotify running, you just pinned it because you didn't want your boss to see it, you know, or something like that. Uh, like, imagine this was like Tinder while you were working, you could just pin it on the side. Just be, you know, like, yeah. And, and then as it grows bigger, you still have that benefit. It grows bigger, you still have that benefit because some of us have those huge screens, and we can do that. So, we play too much. Solved our problem. Look, we have solved our problem. I thought that process was excellent, like Trakaris, you know, like fire. Uh, other things to be aware of. Capacitor. Capacitor is, is, is bay. Capacitor is bay. It's a new approach for accessing native device API that covers web, mobile, uh, electron, all these device targets. You should definitely go check it out. It's already in alpha now or beta, I think. Uh, kind of the same thing. It's going to replace Cordover, but it's like you can call capacitive functions, and if you're on a web application, it's just going to use the web stuff. So, for example, like a Modo, it's just going to use the JavaScript dialog. On Electron, you use the Electron ones. On iOS, you use the iOS ones. Pretty, pretty cool stuff. Uh, and then you have Stencil. If you like to build web components and all those things that I don't like to do, you build the web components so I can use them. I'm more of a user, so do them. And yeah, this is what's going to power the next version of Ionic, because the next version of Ionic is completely platform agnostic. So you can use it with any library, not just uh, Angular. Uh, React, oh, I said that name. Mm. Uh, the, you know, and the other ones, and those guys. Um, it's available for play today. You can go to the GitHub and play with it. Uh, Ionic Pro, 
pretty cool stuff, you know, like they have a lot of things that you can use. Deploy is one of my favorite ones. It allows you to update your apps live without going through the App Store. So you can update your app like really, really live. And I have some talks on that you can check out on YouTube. Package, you can do cloud builds because if you want to create iOS applications, you have to buy this expensive device called a Mac and it's like three months rent. And if you don't fancy doing that, yeah. Error reporting, drag and drop prototyping with Ionic um, Creator. Uh, my bold predictions, these are my bold predictions. PWAs will be accepted to the App Store within the next year. This is going to happen. End of JavaScript frameworks. We're gonna start killing each other because of which framework we're using pretty soon. PWAs will make it to your Mac, Linux, and Windows computer. This has actually already come true because Chrome OS have taken an, uh, Windows, Windows, uh, Microsoft Windows 10 now. You can do this. You can run on your Chrome OS on your Windows device. So, hey, prediction came through. Web is going to be the new native. When we say native, there's a certain connotation that we add to it. But soon, web will have that. Web assembly is here. A lot of things are here. Web is going to be the new native. Shameless promotion, of course. They gave me a stage, and I have four minutes, so I can do whatever I want. <laughs> Besides, they took five minutes for my time, right? Might as well. So I actually have 10 minutes. <laughs> um, I'm creating this thing called UI School. Uh, we're teaching what we call production-driven design. You can go sign up, and yeah, make sure to do that. Also, at the end of this session, I will be outside, and I'm going to be handing some free stuff from um, in three months, uh, Linda, .com trials, so you can learn about Ionic and Angular for free. And yeah, some get started stuff. Uh, you can go to the Ionic site, uh, Electron. You can go to my blog. I don't really write much, but visit it, because I get paid because of ads, and I like getting paid. Um, Twitter is the best bet for catching me. Like I said, if you find anybody looking this cool using my username, and it's not me, you let me know. Uh, and Without further ado, I would welcome questions now, because we have some time. Yes. So I, I use uh, Ionic a lot, yes. um, but what I didn't know is how you pulled up that Ionic lab and you were displaying all three platforms. So could you show me how you ran and launched that Ionic again using lab? Yes, so you know, um, so the normal, you know how you run Ionic Serve? You just run Ionic Lab instead. Uh, yeah, just Ionic Lab. That, that's it, you're good to go. It, it runs Serve behind the scene. Can you talk a little bit about the, the scheduling for when you're leaving Angular and moving to web components? Because web com components still aren't fully accepted, right? That's already happened. Has it? It's already happened. So that's what um, the Ionity built Stencil for. And the, with that, they were able to build all these platform agnostic components. Every single one of the co components is platform agnostic. So Stencil, Stencil is what powers that. Stencil is actually kind of a big deal. And, and so that's already happened. The new version of Ionic, Ionic 4, is being heavily tested as we speak. It's, it's probably, like you can actually go ahead and play with the beta already. Uh, that's pretty cool because now you don't have to be Angular specific, everything, every component just works out of the box, regardless of where you are. So you can have an Ionic component working anywhere now. Yes. So what about those of us that were planning to go from our Angular apps to Ionic? Is that, a, is that no longer a thing, or? So that, yeah, no, so Angular is still supported. So Ionic itself, uh, currently, is built with Angular, but now the new version of Ionic is completely built with Stencil. So basically, those components now, you just be using Ionic the same way you use, like, uh, say, Material Design Library. It's just going to work wherever you put it without being opinionated. So for you, actually, that's a great thing, because now you don't have to worry. You can just integrate your current application, just call Ionic components. Okay. Yeah, we've got time. We've still got five minutes, six minutes, actually. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's all you first. <laughs> Can you talk a little more about this capacitor for native device features and the support that will be ongoing for Cordova native device features? Yeah. So capacitor completely replaces Cordova, if I'm being honest, because there's no need for it. It brings you closer now to the, to, to the native layer. But it's not just only mobile specific. It's also capacitor is a one way, one size fits all for just web, mobile, and um, electron. So now, and with capacitor, if I call like something like get me geolocation, right? 
If, if the device is on a web, it's going to use the web geolocation feature. If it's on iOS, it's going to use the iOS one. If it's on Electron, it will use the built-in like, geolocation feature of the computer. But you don't have to worry about that code. So it's sort of like, it takes, it's like, uh, like Cordova on steroids, but without the bad things that Cordova has, pretty much. Yeah, so it does, there isn't really any performance hit because you, you're just using the same code you would normally use. So if you were using Capacitor and you're working on a web device, you'd be calling the same geolocation. But if you had to support another platform, you'd have to write another code for that. But Capacitor already has that code for you. So there's no performance hit anyways. It's just giving you a unism, if that makes sense. So we can take a couple more. We got time. Hi. Uh, for oh, PWA, recorded. you said the page is cached. Yes. Right. So what happens if you click on a, one of the images and you're redirected to the next page? It would work or it would not work? Yeah, so let's say my app supported that. It, it's going to work because remember, when you're using the cache, it's not really like a browser cache. This is like local. It's cached on your machine's actual storage. Service workers work. They have a different lifespan to the machine. Your app could be closed. The service worker is well working. So whenever you request an image, Right? It's a request to the server that gets sent. But when you have a service worker that's cached out already, it's going to look into your cache first. You can program it, say, hey, look into your cache first. And when it does that, it's just going to return the cache version, not going to the server. So regardless of whether you have 10 pages or you're navigating or not, that's not a problem. So, yes, if you're not connected to the internet, it's just going to get you what you have cached, which is pretty much what you want. But you have control over that. Well, one key thing about service worker caching with most service worker implementations is they're proactive. So with like network cache, you cache something that's already been requested and loaded, but service worker, will, it, it will load things ahead of time before they've been requested. So that's mm -hmm. how it's already in the cache. So we can take one last one, right? Is there one, one more? One. Is there one more? OK, I think we're good. All right. All right. Thank you very much, NGConf. Pleasure was all mine. Thank you. Thank you, Sonny. Nagode. Nagode.